Hello and thank you for joining us on Nationwide, reaching you on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Lami Ali. You can follow this news broadcast live on our website, NCANG Live, and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen for updates. President Muhammad Buhari has expressed confidence in the ability of a significant number of the Federal Executive Council members to aspire to high elective positions, including the presidency, saying they have been sufficiently equipped. This was at a valedictory session for those leaving the cabinet to pursue their political ambitions. State House correspondent Adam Sambu has the story. <laughs> Ten members of the Federal Executive Council have indicated their desire to contest either the presidential, governorship, or national assembly elections. Nine of them attended this farewell audience. President Muhammad Buhari commended the departing ministers for their courage to seek elective positions after serving the nation sacrificially with dignity and honor. I have no doubt that if the next president emerges, from among former members of this cabinet, like any other aspirant, ample competence and outstanding service delivery will be on display. This will be part of our legacies to Nigerians. While wishing the outgoing ministers success in the upcoming elections and future endeavors, the president said their departure has undoubtedly created a vacuum that should be filled, and that he promised will be carried out without delay so that the business of governance will not suffer. For members of the cabinet that are remaining on board, I wish to remind you that the journey to the finish line is very far, and this calls for more diligence, resilience, and commitment to serve Nigerians better. Like always, there will be challenges to address, programs to deliver, and policies to implement. You must therefore brace up for more work and target increased accomplishments. The determination to leave important legacies for Nigerians should never be compromised. The Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Godwill Akpabio, who spoke on behalf of the outgoing ministers, thanked the president for giving them the opportunity to serve the nation, saying, even as they stepped aside, they will continue to remain his disciples. I want you to know that it is time for us to provocate Buharism. For Nigerians who misunderstood you, the next eight months will afford us the opportunity not just to correct the misimpressions, but also to position you where history will record you and posterity will never forget you. We'll never forget your love for this country. We'll never forget your contributions to the country and your, and your deep sense of patriotism. I'm grateful for all the president has said, and we are glad to have worked with a man who has so much passion for a nation called Nigeria. We are making a case for Nigerian women. It's not about falling talent. It's about getting more women in the National Assembly. We cannot allow men to deny women of their rightful positions. So you have resigned? I've not yet resigned. The 10 ministers seeking elective positions have only three days remaining within which their letters of resignation must be tendered. But whether all of them will summon the courage to leave from what appears to be certainty for uncertainty, only time will tell. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News.
From there, we move to the National Assembly, where the struggle continues for constitutional reinstatement of statutory rules for traditional rulers in Nigeria. As its umbrella body, the National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria meets with the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawal. Ignatius Nkwo has the reports. Long before colonization, the traditional rulers have been in charge of managing security, peace and development processes in their domains. Till this day, they still carry out most of these roles, acting as the middlemen in relating government policies and programs to the grassroots, where they have the trust of the people as the custodians of values, norms and tradition. But there is a snag there. The 1979 constitution didn't capture the statutory roles they have been enjoying, and since then, they have been advocating a review. A move to effect the change was made during the Ninth National Assembly's amendment of the 1999 Constitution, but it failed to meet the 73 votes required at the Senate. Well, these royal fathers are not given up. At the Lord's Chambers, we are very fortunate to send to their debate and their exercise to once again appeal to the upper chambers to reconsider. The man at the center of the interface says the monarchs are prepared to achieve results. We are here to, publish, to see that they should represent this being but, and they reconsider our position, the proposal of traditional ruler to include the rule of traditional ruler in the, national, in the constitutional amendment. If for the interest of the country and for the interest is confident, when we are now recognized in the constitution, meaning that we are having confidence to do our job, having a constitutional backup. President of the Senate could not agree less. We are taking the right decision by coming back. And we'll find out why we jump 10 short, 10 words short. The process of constitution review is a continuous process. The traditional institutions held particularly in the spirit of others and of the better. Senator Lawan also wants those whose bills could not scale through at the National Assembly to take a cue from the action of this traditional leaders. Ignatius, Inco, NTNews. In the three-day capacity building on mediation and negotiation for Benue State Traditional Council has ended in Abuja with a resolve to constitute an all-inclusive traditional council mediation and negotiation committee for quick response to conflicts and threats in the state in line with the strategies acquired from the training. Francis Form reports. The three-day training focused on the fundamentals of mediation and the related skills in negotiation, in addition to extensive theoretical analyses. A lot of the work they're doing, they're already experiencing. So I was personally really under the impression how, I, how much they already do. And we just kind of gave them some tools that can help them on their way. After some time, we then have to see, revisit the issue, meet them again. Uh, this time perhaps convening in, uh, in Benway to now ask them what are their experiences. Participants benefited from simulation, which allowed them to experience the dynamics in mediation and negotiation. We have also learned from this meeting the essence of bringing peace to our community. The communique presented by His Royal Highness Christopher Aujale was summarized by the chairman, Benue State Council of Traditional Rulers. We will go back and repackage what we have received in the context of our tradition and environment and give examples that are local. They also promised to advise the Benue State Government to fast track the adoption of the bill for the establishment of a peace commission that is before the Benue State House of Assembly. Then comes the signing of the communique and the presentation of certificates to the participants. Franks is from NTA News. Now, challenges may come up at any time. And to be an effective leader, one should be able to respond to challenges with intelligence, strategy and expertise. Former President Lucia Gombas enjoys of the opinion that these factors are key to development. Haman Jabani has the reports. I believe that success requires agile leaders who can skillfully lead through change, drive performance 
and cultivate a people-first culture of engagement and accountability. At the same time, effective and efficient leaders have to continue enhancing their skills and ability through leadership training programs to meet the organization's goals and develop the people. This former president, Olusha Gumabasanjo, believe can be achieved with the coming on board of Godney Leadership Center as leadership is taught and acquired. He said people must be ready to teach all these while the people must be ready to learn. When you talk about the problem of an African country, and particularly of Nigeria, they will say it is leadership. Leader, leadership deficit and leadership deficiency. And both can be taken care of in this uh, Gutni Leadership Center. It's important that they come and sit down and understand what leadership is about so that when they get into the leadership positions they will do well because they have been groomed they understand leadership competencies they are visionary they are men and women of honor and they can make things happen Gordon leadership center believes that acquiring leadership skills will increase productivity nurture future leaders and improve managerial skills and abilities among other leadership strengths Hamman Jabani and TNE and a tripartite meeting between the federal government and all striking public university workers is to continue next week. This was the outcome of the meeting led by the chief of staff to the president, Professor Ibrahim Gamburi. The meeting, which had in attendance representatives of government agencies, inter-religious council, NIREC, led by the Sultan of Sokoto and the Kent president, Asu, Nasu, Sanu and Nat, focused on how to narrow the issue towards addressing all the concerns of the university once and for all. NIREC leadership pleaded with the unions to call off the strikes while negotiation continues. The Minister of Labour and Employment, Chris Ngigi, briefed the media as the end of the meeting. So everybody uh, is happy. We have reached some agreements and uh, we hope that by next week those agreements will be maturing and then uh, the different unions will have something to tell their members so that they can call off the strike. Yes, we put a, some timeline for some uh, aspects like a, a renegotiation of uh, Dutan and, and agreement in terms of condition of uh, service and uh, wage review. So we were hopeful that by next weekend that uh, the unions will see a conclusion of that, that area. The meeting was in response to President Buhari's directive for a lasting resolution to the university strike action. Now, Minister of State, Industry, Trade and Investment, Mariam Katagum, says the federal government is committed to focusing on initiatives that will strengthen economic diversification and real sector developments, leading about 40 organizations across government agencies to Sao Paulo in Brazil for a business forum. The minister assured the Brazilian counterparts that Nigeria was asked the forum to strengthen collaboration in agriculture and agro-allied services, mining, gas development, digital economy and infrastructure. Nigeria's ambassador to Brazil, Professor Mohamed Ahmed Makarfi, describing the event as a culmination of similar one in 2019, said it was time to deepen social and economic ties by the two countries for a win-win situation. Ambassador Makarfi disclosed that Nigeria will soon benefit from Brazil's partnership in transforming agricultural value chain under Green Imperative Program. The four days event had as its theme expanding Nigeria-Brazil trade and business relations. We now move to Lagos, where Michael Olale is there to bring us stories trending from that end. He has continued to invest in the development of its personnel with a view to sustaining availability and operational efficiency in meeting current maritime challenges. This became evident at the inauguration of the Medium Basic Apprenticeship Course 1 for 2022 at the Naval Dockyard Apprenticeship School, Lagos. It is aimed at equipping trainees with requisite skills. Hinginugan John Adams reports. 
Apart from its mandate of protecting the integrity of the nation's maritime domain, the Nigerian Navy is also making contributions in the technological advancement of the nation through local manpower development and the Nigerian content actualization. Trainees will be exposed to modern techniques in welding and fabrication, carpentry, electrical electronics, as well as plumbing and pipe fitting. Chief of Naval Engineering, Rear Admiral Suleiman El Ladan, who declared open the training, said the program will build the capacity of personnel for enhanced operations and advance the course of the Nigerian Navy. After you graduate from this college, and the knowledge so gained and skills will be put to practice to enhance the Nigerian Navy operational capability. You are to pass the course because it's not about using the brain, it is about using your hands. And there's a simple saying, what you see, you learn. So we are going to train and retrain you until you pass. Mordi and Adeleye, who are among students to benefit from the training, are looking forward to sharpening their skills at the end of the program. We hope that uh, after the training, we'll be able to put in our best. It's expected of me that I actually uh, acquire a skill that will enable me to be able to weld and to fabricate some pieces of work and to carry out a maintenance on board our various vessels. The school was set up to provide basic technical expertise in specialized areas. In Lagos, Hinginu John Adams, NTA News. To strengthen the fight against illicit drugs in the country, the Nigerian Navy has donated two boats and equipment to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA. NIGRD reports that this, uh, with this, the marine operations of the anti-drug agency is fortified. Before now, the NDLEA and the Nigerian Navy have worked together to check the use of marine space for the drug trafficking and other heinous crimes. With the donation of these boats and training equipment by the Nigerian Navy, Chairman of the NDLEA, retired Brigadier General Buba Marua, says the synergy and ties are now stronger to put an end to the problem of illicit drugs with the devastating effect on the nation's human and economic resources. Represented by the Director of Seaports Operations of the NDLEA, Omolade Faboyede, the agency's chairman noted that collaboration with the military, especially the Navy, will produce more outstanding results in the country's fight against narcotic drugs and psychopathic substances. We had um, several arrests that they have been that, that they have transferred to us, and we are working together. It is due to that collaboration that this is coming up. So it's going to be the continuous synergy. The chief of naval staff. Rear Admiral Awal Gambo, represented, explained that the donation will assist the NDLEA while boosting the maritime security activities of the Navy. He said the equipment were to consolidate the efforts of the Navy as several formations of the Nigerian Navy across the nation had impounded illicit drugs and arrested the dealers who were handed over to the NDLEA. Well, since this is the first time of them using this kind of equipment, we are going to give them the basic training as directed by the Chief of Naval Staff. Then later on, as we progress, we'll continue to give them the, the advanced training as required. Both agencies express determination to cripple the activities of drug cartels on every front. In Lagos, Enojo Adiku, NTA News. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. Time for some messages and when we return, Nationwide continues with Salama 2 in Kaduna. Please stay. More than six thousand naira. Only pension. We serve for thirty-five years, and they don't even remember us. These increases have not been paid at all. No harmonisation. Some people since they retired, they have not got a dime. Then at the last instant, when you are old, you are not strong at it. Your entitlements are not being paid. It's unfortunate. The expectation is, if you dedicate your life to public service, you are guaranteed a solemn retirement. But if you were essentially to dedicate your life, work and resources 
to the public service in Nigeria, how secure will your resting days be? The pension system in Nigeria is in a crisis, one that needs urgent attention. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you. In your living room, office, and everywhere, anywhere. We provide a company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs, and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview Channel 264, or live streaming via www.visiontv.co.uk. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. A new edition of TV Guide is out exclusively with Professor Umar Garba Dambata, Executive Chairman of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. We have unveiled the 622 as a toll pre line through which consumers can be able to lodge their complaints. And we have provided Introducer 112 as a national emergency number. This edition is a compendium of mind-blowing stories for your reading pleasure, ranging from technology, entertainment, economy, media, politics, family, and lots more. Pick up your copy and get abreast with issues and trending features within our space. TV Guide, very incisive, very educative and compelling. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. This is Nationwide, and thanks for joining us in Kaduna. Local government autonomy has continued to elicit high degree of interest among the people. This is because as the third tier of government, they are mere appendages of state government. Participants, of course, 44 of the National Institute of Policy Strategies Studies, JOS, have visited Kaduna to understudy operations of local governments as third tier of government. Umar Ajingi reports. The team had interactive session with the state deputy governor Hadiza Balarebi to understand the workability of local government in the state. Leader of the team said first hand information Possibly. will aid the participants to have accurate data on operations of the 23 local government areas in the state. The truth of the matter is that the constitution itself is not firm to provide a constitutional order on legalism for local governance. So, but it's because the model itself is defective. So when it's right, even if states are empowered to function through the local government, it will be binding by constitution and law. The Deputy Governor Hadiza Balarebe said Kaduna is among the states that granted local government autonomy with establishment of local government legislative councils empowered to enact bylaws for the smooth run of local governments in the state. Local government system is really very important. Uh, and we've been working assiduously to see that there are various reforms that we put in place, you know, for this uh, to take place and to make the local government, you know, stand strong. It is expected that findings by this group will provide clear picture of problems impeding local government administration and proper solutions. In Kaduna, Umara Jingi, NTA News.
The Nigerian Customs Service Kano Jigawa Area Command has appealed to the Kano business community to take advantage of the various import and export facilities abound in the area for more income generation and timely delivery of goods and services. The controller of the command, Mohammed Umar, made the plea while showcasing the successes recorded in the command's anti-smuggling campaign. Our Salis who has details. The Kano Jigawa Area Command of the Nigerian Customs Service has from January to April this year made giant strike in its effort to rid the country from smuggling activities. The effort yielded positive results with confiscation of 1,593 bags of foreign rice, 1,237 cartons of foreign soap, and 131 bags of secondhand clothes, as well as other contrabands, all valued at more than 1.9 billion naira. The command reiterates commitment to support and promote legitimate businesses for the country's economic growth. Kano Jigao Command is using this medium to invite all genuine businessmen to come and explore the advantage in the area common, which include availability of inland container terminals, which will save the populace in Lagos from traffic nightmare of Lagos, and the rigors in the clearance procedure as a result of congestion in Lagos port. The Gateri border, which serves as a gateway for both import and export of goods, the import and export clearing procedure could be completed without compromising government policy and avoid going to Lagos. The command says illicit drugs amounted to 34,940 sachets of tramadol and 535 packs of cannabis confiscated will after investigation be handed over to National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. The controller appreciated the effort of the officers of the command for their selfless service. In Kano, Awal Salisu, NTA News. That's all from here. More reports on Nationwide with Lami in Abuja. Good evening. Many thanks, Salamatsu. In pursuance of international human rights standards, the National Human Rights Commission has commenced the 2022 audit of detention facilities nationwide. Main Camera Chuku reports that this is in line with the Commission's mandate of promoting human rights in Nigeria. The National Human Rights Commission Amendment Act 2010 empowers the Commission to visit custodian centers, police cells, and other places of detention in order to ascertain the conditions of these facilities and recommendations to the appropriate authorities to mainstream human rights norms and tenets. In pursuance of this, the Commission is on a visit to the headquarters of Nigerian Correctional Center as part of its activities for the 2022 audit of detention centers across Nigeria. It is worthy of note that inmates in custodial facilities are entitled to enjoy general human rights, including the right to good health, pursuant to international human rights standards and best practices, thus welfare and access to medical care for all inmates. That even amidst lean resources and excruciating circumstances, beginning from the recent. I wish to let you know that NCOS attained a unique feat that set a global record by successfully recording a non-single case scenario at the peak of the COVID-19 global pandemic. Health team will also accompany the officials of the commission throughout the 2022 audit exercise in Abuja, Umeka, Marchuku, and News. The federal government says it will lend a helping hand to South Sudan in fighting insurgency and restoring cohesion to the country. President Muhammad Buhari made the promise while receiving an audience that the special envoy of the South Sudanese leader, President Salva Kiir. State House correspondent Adam Musambu has that story. The special envoy of the South Sudanese leader, Albino Mathom Ayuel, is in Nigeria on the mandate of his president, Salva Kiir, to intimate President Muhammad Buhari with the situation in his country. He said an insurgent group, in particular, just like Boko Haram, kills, maims, and destroys mercilessly. The envoy appealed for close collaboration between Nigeria and South Sudan on security, 
particularly the training of the South Sudanese forces given Nigeria's experience in the area. Mr. Albino Ayol said South Sudan is keen on ending the insurgent activities, hence the appeal to the big brother Nigeria. President Muhammad Buhari told the special envoy the situation his administration inherited on coming to power in 2015, especially in the Northeast, and how great strides have been taken in comparison with present days. Nigeria, he said, will study the South Sudanese situation and see how it can help. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And President Muhammad Buhari has set up a task team to support One Planet Summit initiative. He all further requested the United Nations Conference on Combating Desertification, UNCCD, and the summit to give advice on a suitable financial consultant for a Pan African Great Green Wall Agency project. This was as the 15th conference of the parties to the United Nations Conference on Combating Desertification, UNCCD, and Infrastructural Deficit seat in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire, following his election in December last year as the president of the Conference of Heads of States and Governments of the Member States. The conference focused on biodiversity to mobilize commitments to projects, ecosystems and links to human health, while other areas such as desertification, climate change, education, health and economy all are also to occupy center stage. President Buhari's leadership will be leveraging the $19 billion to support the activities of the Pan-African Great Green Wall Agency in enhancing security, enforcing regional stability and strengthening of existing cultural ties among the 11-member bloc with multilateral cooperation from global actors. Now, delegates of the All Progressives Congress for the forthcoming presidential primary election from Kaduna State have interacted with one of the party's frontline presidential aspirants, Ahmed Bola Tinubu, where he can pass for their votes to enable him become the standard bearer of the All Progressives Congress in next year's presidential election. Umar Ajingi reports that Governor Nasser Ahmed Erufai led party officials in the state in receiving the aspirants. Political atmosphere in Kaduna State is getting charged, especially in the ruling All Progressive Congress with series of meetings. The visit of Bola Ahmed Tunibu to the state is in continuation of consultations with critical stakeholders in the party. The presidential aspirant is meeting 69 delegates who are expected to cast their ballots at the party's presidential primary election. Bola Ahmed Tunibu's strategy to convince them to support his aspiration remains central theme of this interactive session. We are in that season again now to elect people. I said, please, elect me. I am the best of all of them. Honestly, the easiest political decision I have ever made in my political life was to support Ashwaju Bola and Kinebu for the president of my country. While raising issues of national interest, the aspirant emphasizes on securing the country if given the opportunity. He re-emphasizes the need for Nigerians to remain united and avoid things which tend to polarize the nation. Governor Nasr Ahmed Erufai thanked the aspirant for sparing his time to engage delegates of Kaduna State. In Kaduna, Umar Ajingi, NTN News. And the International Conference Center in Abuja is still playing host to political party activities of the All Progressives Congress, APC. Sally Gwanora reports that buying and submission of expression of interest and nomination forms are going on simultaneously. It is the prolonged critical pre-election activities by the governing All Progressives Congress. Beyond the earlier 11 days for the exercise, it is more than two weeks now. An aspirant still show up at the International Conference Center to pick up and submit the party's forms. I don't see any challenges. I don't have any fears. I believe that power belongs to God and he alone gives power. 
And if God has de designed and destined, destined that uh, Ahmad Sani Alima Bokura is the next president, inshallah, I will be, and so it be. There are aspirations everywhere. And there are so many eminently qualified people, right? But in the spirit of equity, fairness, you know, that we'll have in our, in our country, right? I think it's just morally fair that it goes, you know, to that part. We are working to ensure that the candidate for gubernatorial and other elections will emerge in a manner that is accepted, that is agreed to by the rules of the party and the electoral act. Although there is no official number of those that picked the forms so far, members are desirous that prospective candidates will emerge through primary elections that will follow the party's guidelines. We have a saying in Gombe, I will say it in Hausa, we say it's either today, tomorrow or now we are ready for the elections. No shaking. We have analyzed all and we are bringing all to the table in the interest of our communities, in the interest of our government, in the interest of Nigeria. We shall make Nigeria great. We shall make Nigeria State great. Screening of aspirants is scheduled to hold on the 14th of May 2022 from the International Conference Center in Abuja, Sali Ugwanara, NTA News. You may say, like mother, like daughter, Dr. Karu Nguzu has joined her mother to contest the 2023 presidential election. Linda Okuri Igwe reports that the presidential hopeful, who is vying for the presidency under the platform of Africa Action Congress, obtained the form in Abuja. Her journey to clinch the presidential ticket of African Action Congress begins with this presentation of forms amidst cheers by her supporters. Like a 102-year-old mother, Karen Wonsu, who declared to run for presidency, a global consultant on micro, small, and medium enterprises, believes she is capable of taking Nigeria to greater heights. Her vision is to fill the nation through robust and sustained agricultural program that will be rolled out across the 774 local government areas of the country if given the mandate. I will do anything that God had given me as a gift, plus the one he led me to learn and the, the father to lead. I see my people in pain. I am also in pain. There is hunger in our land the way it has never been before. Know that a hungry man is an angry man. Dr. Karen Mosso is the second female aspirant that has indicated interest in the presidential race. In Abuja, Linda Okori Igwe, NTNA. Former presiding officers of state houses of assembly on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, have resolved to work towards the adoption of a cons consensus presidential candidate. Timothy Yusuf reports that some organs of the new Nigeria People's Party in the African Democratic Congress are also strategizing towards H-free primaries. Yes, All former presiding officers and deputies of state houses of assembly are statutory delegates. This forum, made up of more than 100, is leveraging on its numerical strength to give full support in the PDP presidential primary election. We want to have, you know, a block vote for a particular candidate whom we agree have the capacity and credibility to win the general election. The Justice and Equity Group has approached the PDP National Working Committee ahead of the party's primaries to respect zoning formula in Enugu State. Why are we talking of zoning control in Nigeria in general? We are talking of justice, we are talking of fairness, we are talking of equity. And in NNPP, the women's wing of the party has appealed to women and youth to vote only capable leaders into elective positions during the 2023 general elections. We will educate them, we will enlighten them, we will, uh, we will mobilize them, and we make work among ourselves. Former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria and YPP presidential candidate in the 2019 election, Professor Kingsley Morganu has met with the National Working Committee of the African Democratic Congress, ADC, 
briefed members of his intention to clinch the party's ticket in the 2023 presidential election. Our party, the ADC, is the credible alternative. But after the primaries, we will unroll our strategy. We are going to have a superpower in Nigeria. Professor Mogalu is making a second attempt at the country's presidency. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu says security agencies should identify and address threats ahead of the 2023 general elections within the nine months left. The chairman made the appeal at an interagency election security consultative meeting in Abuja. The general security situation in the country and its impact on the electoral process is a source of concern to the Commission. However, we are confident that with nine months to the 2023 general election, there is enough time to respond to the security challenges and secure the nation for elections to take place nationwide. The timetable for the election has been released. Let us not wait until a few weeks to the election before we realize that time is not on our side and begin to seek for extension of timelines. The security advisor in a message tasks the security agencies to rise to the occasion and ensure that no individual or group tests the might of the state. And law enforcement agencies have been tasked to step up close monitoring and profiling of political actors, no matter highly placed, who exhibit tendencies that subvert the electoral process. Time now to join our Enugu Network Center, where Comfort Ainim is there to, as our anchor. Over to you, Comfort. Thank you, Lamy, and welcome to Enugu Network Center. To achieve sustainable development and protection of the nation's investment, engineering practice in Nigeria must be regulated under the re relevant codes of the profession. This issue was the agenda that brought together the Enugu State Government and the National Officers of the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Kuren. Susan Eze has the report. With cases of failed structures making the news in Nigeria every now and then, the engineering practice more than ever before is faced with the challenge of tightening all loose ends. Going by the operational guidelines of the Engineering Regulations Monitoring, ERM, of Corin, there ought to be a national technical and an expatriate monitoring committees, both of which are to be replicated at the state level to implement policies formulated at the national Presenting members of the two committees in Enugu State to the state government for inauguration, the national president of Koren, Ali Rabiu, described as heartwarming the partnership between the state government and Koren. So, I think that's one of the best that the big government of Enugu State, the continue to insist that any person practicing engineering in the US, the way, Particularly, we need to take the issue of what's in the structure, and indeed, all the very main organizations in the state work by the law. Declaring its zero tolerance for Pakre, the Enugu State Government said it is ready to be part of every effort at revolutionizing the practice of engineering in the country. I think for all the community to come up with stringent regulations that should guide the ethics and practice of the profession as well as to adhere to project specifications. The committees are to work with emphasis on five sectors in Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. Over 160 young farmers from Enugu State who went on training on modern farming techniques, courtesy of the state government, have returned. The young farmers on a two-week intensive farm train, training at a modern farm in Kefi, Nasrawa State, were welcomed by the state government and charged to revolutionize the agri-sector. Susan Eze again, report. 
The trainees were grateful to the state government for this knowledge upgrade. They assured the state government that with this training, the will of the food revolution agenda of the administration has just gathered momentum. The future of Nigeria, the future of Enugu State, the future of the world at large rests in the minds and in the hearts, in the hands of every young farmer that is here today. You're giving us an opportunity to become heroes. Farmers are what? The goal of this training, according to the state government, is to raise agro-entrepreneurs for food sufficiency and raw materials production for agro-industries. That's often said that tomorrow belongs to the youths. We do not just want to say it as a government, but we want to do it. Because we know that the future of this state and the future of our country rest solely on our youth. Uh, we're now saying young persons, um, agriculture is beautiful, uh, it's glamorous, there's money in it, so bring your innovative, uh, your creativity, your capacity into it. The young farmers are expected to form cooperatives to key into the existing federal government agricultural schemes, state grants for farmers, among other programs, to develop into successful agro-business entrepreneurs. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. And that was our contribution from Enugu. Remember, you can follow this news broadcast live on our social media handle, at Twitter handle, at NTA News Now, our Facebook page, at NTA Network News, and our YouTube channel, at NTA Live. We'll take another break here nationwide. We'll continue with Zendret in Jos after this break. The 157-kilometer Lagos-Ibadan Railway is the first double-track standard gauge railway to be built in West Africa. The Mobalaji Johnson train station is a masterpiece, an infrastructure that is gradually becoming an iconic building in Lagos State. The modern facilities put the station on a world map of train stations. Likewise, other new train stations across the country built to world-class standards. The train and its convenience is indeed an admirable effort with commendations from Nigerians. This is a station that we have to commend the federal government for putting a beautiful face, empowering us in Lagos State, not only in economic and uh, political arena, I can say that I'm really impressed with the infrastructures in place. Kudos to the Minister of Transportation. Kudos to the federal government. Truly, good things are coming out of Nigeria, and the federal government is deserving of all the applause. Horse racing is a sport, a culture, and a celebration. The Top Club Federation of Nigeria, DCFN, brings this and more to Sokoto in this year's West African International Derby. To celebrate the 15th coronation anniversary of His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, Al Haji Muhammad Sa'ad Abu Bakr III. The live patron of TCFN, His Royal Highness the Etinope Al Haji Dr. Yahya Abu Bakr, will, by the grace of God, raise the top of Shehu Kangiwa Race Course Sokoto on the weekends of Friday, the 3rd of June 2022 to the 5th of June 2022, and Friday, the 10th of June 2022 to the 12th of June 2022. TCFN will, by this second edition of its West African International Derby, not only celebrate a remarkable royal father, but one of its own pillars in the person of the Sultan himself, who serves as the Grand Patron of the Federation. The broadcast media ecosystem is dynamic and requires continuous training for practitioners to perform optimally. NTA Television College JAWS invites relevant officers to the following specially packaged training programs. Protocol Event Management and Public Relations, date 2nd May to 13th May 2022, two weeks. Video Camera Maintenance, date 16th May to 27th May 2022, two weeks. Basic Television Production Techniques, date 16th May to 10th June 2022, four weeks. Photojournalism and Photography, date 6th June to 1st July 2022, four weeks. Intermediate Online News Reporting Skills, date 4th July to 29th July 2022, four weeks. Sports Coverage and Reporting Skills in the Mass Media, Date 4th July to 15th July 2022, two weeks. The course fee for two weeks courses is 150,000 Naira per participant, while the fee for four weeks courses is 180,000 Naira only. Accommodation inclusive. 
The venue for all courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA Television College near Old Government House, Rayfield, Jaws. For more inquiries, please call 0803-079-5335 or 0806-980-9807. NTA Television College, Jaws. Training you to be the best you want to be. Thanks for staying with us on Nationwide and welcome to JOS. Plata government says it is ready to partner foreign investors to harness its agricultural potentials towards enhancing food security. Governor Simon Lalong expressed this willingness in JOS while receiving prospective investors. Plata State is blessed with vast agricultural potentials that are capable of turning the economic fortunes of the state. It is against this backdrop that the state is seeking collaboration with foreign investors to harness its agricultural produce, particularly fruits and vegetables, to boost its revenue and enhance food security. The purpose of government is to create an enabling environment. So that is what we're doing, because we hope that on agriculture alone, Nigeria can benefit from plateau state. The world can also benefit us. Our people will also, the economy of the people of the state and people will also improve. Leader of the South African team, who is fast in agricultural project evaluation and implementation, notes that the seaport and the push for an international airport in the state will no doubt promote export activities. We've identified a number of a number of crops that we want to start with. Absolutely sure uh, we can make things uh, we can make things happen. The team is expected to inspect some farms and other agricultural facilities in the state. Ahead of the 2023 general elections, the Independent National Electoral Commission, Plata State, is calling on intending registrants to take advantage of the fourth quarter continuous voter registration to get their permanent voter cards. Felicia Dali of Somaila has details. The fourth quarter continuous voters registration exercise is for persons who turned 18 years and above after the last voter registration. It is also to avail voters the opportunity to transfer their registration from current to present polling units, as well as address issues such as cut loss, omitted PVCs, defaced PVCs, and to update bio details. We are beginning to see the need for us to step up and you know get ourselves involved in the political process. I need to get a, a polling unit close by. That's why I come to redo it again. INEC also calls on intending registrants to take advantage of this opportunity to get registered by visiting the World Registration Rotation Centers in their various local government areas. The recent expansion of polling units have taken care of several problems. Those who hit at all have been going far, very far away from their registration areas. Their polling unit to register during election now have the opportunity to go and transfer their voting uh, uh, stations to area closest to them. The commission cautions those who have already registered to avoid double registration. In just, Felicia Dalio, Samaila, NTA News. That's it from Joss. It's back to Lami in Abuja. Many thanks, Zanret. Sokoto State Government has ordered the immediate closure of the Shehushagari College of Education, Sokoto. This followed a student's arrest, which led to the death of a student of the college, Shehu Muhammad Deti reports. The student's demonstration started this morning as a female student, Deborah Samuel, was alleged to have been blaspheming against Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, several times in her post in a group chat. This angered the students who overpowered the security men that tried to rescue her, attacked and set her ablaze. The state government expressed dismay over the unfortunate incident. The state commissioner of information, Isa Bajini Lenchi, while briefing newsmen on the incident, identified the student as Deborah Samuel of Home Economics Department from Rijo, Niger State. The commissioner of information said already the government has directed the closure of the college. 
The commissioner also confirmed the directives of the governor to the Ministry for Higher Education and relevant security agencies in the state to commence investigations into the remote and immediate cause of the incident. The government will take appropriate actions on the findings of the investigations by, by the relevant authorities. A statement by the Sultan of the Council of Sokoto also condemned the incident and called for calm. In Sokoto, Sheikh Muhammad Dati, NTN. And the Muslim media practitioners of Nigeria has condemned in strong terms the jungle justice meted out to a girl, Deborah, in Sukuto State, on the excuse of committing a blasphemy against the prophets of Islam, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on Thursday, describing such action as anti Islam barbaric and sad. In a statement by the national president of the group, Abdurrahman Balogun, in Abuja, the group described the case of mob killing of the girl in Sokoto as a criminal offence in Islamic law. He said the punishment for any offence in Islamic law is decided by a judge. No other member of the public has that jurisdiction. In essence, it is a criminal offence in the Sharia of Islam for anyone or any group to take the law into their hands. Meanwhile, the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, has condemned in strong terms the gruesome murder of a Christian 200-level student of the Shehu Shagari College of Education, Sokoto, Debra Samuel, by some extremist fellow students on alleged blasphemy. In a statement, CAN's General Secretary Joseph Daramola says the unlawful and dastardly action of the perpetrators must not only be condemned, but also bring the culprits to book. CAN acknowledges the swift reaction of His Eminence, Sultan of Sokoto, Mohammed Saad Abubakar III, who not only condemned the act, but also urged security agencies to bring the perpetrators to justice. The statement stresses that Nigeria remains a non-religious state and commiserates with the family of the deceased. And this is where we come to the end of Nationwide for today. We thank you for watching. Remember, say no to rape and rapists all the time. Join the NTA in this campaign. I'm Lami Ali and have a wonderful weekend. <laughs>